Welcome to What's My Thesis. I'm your host, Javier Proenza, and today my guest is Kevin Cooley. Hello. All right, so then where, where did you grow up? Were you, are you a California person? or I was born in California. Technically, I'm a fourth-generation Angelino, okay. but I grew up in uh, Boulder, Colorado. Boulder? I learned how to climb there. That oh, was, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Did you... Are, On the flat irons? Uh, yeah, actually, 100%. And uh, I did my first multi-pitch climb up there. Wow. Yeah. It was very, very cool. Uh, did you climb at all when you I were skied. No you skied. No climbing. Oh, ski sounds fun. That's yeah. like, that is like something that my family, I was always jealous of families that did that, you know, like that, like were into skiing because my parents were Cuban. So they like, they don't were, like the snow. They were beach people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they would take us to the snow, but they weren't like, let's get a ski p lift pass, you know? Yeah. My parents bought like a timeshare and we were like skied and. Yeah. Our timeshares were all it like in the in in golf courses that we knew somebody that had access to like the leftover ones that weren't occupied oh yeah <laughs> that's the way to go yeah so that was pretty sweet but cool so then angelino like uh your parents came over to california on the mayflower and almost almost <laughs> no so like is that are they gold rush people or um ellis island my my great grandfather came through ellis island Italian immigrant. Oh, okay. Uh, Cooley is uh, Italian? Cooley's not Italian, but um, my mom's side is Parma. But like, no, they came to the West in what, it, it, during gold rush times or anything like that? Anything exciting? Before that. No, my um, my grandfather owned- my, I don't know how many four generations is. <laughs> my great grandfather, this is, I guess, four generations. Well, how many years, like what era does four generations take us back to? Do you know? Like the 1800s? I don't have the quite- at the timeline, but I know he opened the first, um, like general grocery store in the main strip in Santa Barbara. Oh, okay. So that's a pretty big claim yeah. to fame. I bet Santa Barbara was tiny back then. Pretty tiny back then. And he used all his money and he bought this, this land in the hills that he then gave away. And now it's this big open space called the, um, the Parma open space or Parma park. Oh, cool. And his uh, olive trees are still there. The Giovanni Grove, you can hike through it. It's really cool. Oh, wow. Olive trees. They, that is a very Italian thing to donate to a park. I, yeah. I, well, no, he would like get the, the oil from it and sell it. And oh, so it was like, uh, it was, he was legit making it. Because when, when I was a kid, I lived in the suburbs in Italy, and there were these buildings. It was like apartment complexes, and they all had a park next to it, and they were full of olive trees. So like we would just have olives like to pick out. It was like it was kind of crazy, but the the trees over there are insane everywhere. What was Colorado like for you? Just skiing? Uh, skiing in the winter time, and then lots of camping. I was a I was a Boy Scout forever, and we did lots of. You were a Boy Scout. Yeah. Do you think that informs your art practice at all? <laughs> I mean, it might. You know, there's like a ritual thing there. Yeah, that, it's funny. My my son now is a Cub Scout, and like I go to. I guess the parents have to be involved more in everything these days. So I go to all these meetings and I can't stand the ritual. <laughs> it's like, I'm so anti, I'm like, let's get out of here. Let's go, let's go camping by ourselves. Oh, really? Cause it's like uh, organizational camping. Yeah. I guess it's like, it's like kind of military, kind of religious, you know, really? just a little bit. So like, what are the religious undertones? Well, like there's a, there's like the scouts motto and it's like, um, it ends with like, I promise to be physically fit mentally awake and morally straight and like it just gets me every time i'm like why do we have to say that that just sounds <laughs> sounds wrong it needs to be yeah. updated yeah yeah is it the straight part or is it the morally or is it both that's all of it and especially <laughs> the straight part i don't know what morally straight even means but yeah it is a weird selection of words yeah yeah but um so then but then you were like you grew up outdoorsy yeah go outdoorsy uh you know, we, my parents had a timeshare in the mountains and we'd go there all the time. Um, and then the Boy Scouts, a lot of camping, hiking, uh -huh. backpacking, tying knots, rafting, knot tying, tubing. Work. Yeah. I went to a, a scout camp and I, um, cut my knee open with an ax. That was pretty exciting. How did you do that? Just, Just like trying to chop wood? Well, it wasn't wasn't using proper technique <laughs> and the the axe came or it was a hatchet it wasn't an axe it was a hatchet yeah and, uh sliced open my knee i still have a scar that's crazy so then what and you're a photographer now right i am mostly. so 
mostly do you do what are the where else do you go uh for a while i was doing a lot of video and video based installations okay and in terms of what um what i see is a lot of uh very nicely lit uh out like you know landscape uh, stuff with action uh, active stuff see this is why i don't describe art on this podcast you see <laughs> because i'm bad at it but just to give people like you're not doing street photography how would you describe yourself as a photographer uh i photograph the landscape mostly but i i think about it in terms of the like the natural elements the four classical elements so that would be earth, like wind, earth, air, fire, and water, whatever order you want to put those in. Okay. So I have, for the most of the past 10 years, I've been focusing on fire. Okay. Um, but more recently, I've been thinking about water. Is it because there are so many fires? <laughs> that That's you... <laughs> definitely part of it. Yeah. Um, before uh, my wife and I moved to Altadena, we lived in Tahunga, where a fire almost took out our house. Oh, wow. It came about 100 yards away. And at this time, I was actually working on a, um, a fire project where I was making fires. And um, I also had been photographing a lot of wildfires uh, uh -huh. for magazines and things like that for applications. And I like to go to the fires. I don't like them to come to me. Yeah, yeah. So. When you said you were making fires, I immediately got a flash of like, the TikTok hate that the artist would get for burning down. So how were you starting the fires? You were just like controlled because they were totally controlled and they were totally unrelated to to, to wildfires. <laughs> You're not, I didn't mean to imply yes, they, those those two things. Well, no, it's it's a common thing, and I often say, I'm like, no, those two those two paths will never cross. Uh, no, I mean, I do have like a. You I know, picture the, uh, sorry, I picture the, the parents that do the gender reveals and like yes. how everybody just like piles hate on them. Oh yeah, they definitely. Yeah. So I keep my pyrotechnic stuff. I mean, I've been working with a somewhat professional pyrotechnist, <laughs> which is what I want to talk about today. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So, so this person is a pyrotechnic expert? This person is a pyrotechnic expert. Yeah. So um, I started thinking about smoke and fire um, in 2013 when um, the Papal Conclave got together to come up with a new pope and this was ratzinger turning into francis yes oh, in yeah. 2013 yeah he's the first pope sorry to benedict benedict he's like the first pope to resign right yeah yeah and they had to pick a new pope and part of the process is when they meet in secrecy they have to give a smoke signal mm -hmm. that that indicates whether or not they've reached the conclusion mm -hmm. and the first one that they did was black smoke first one and black smoke meant they hadn't reach the decision. It has to be unanimous, I guess. And then um, a few days later, they did this white smoke and that meant they had elected a new pope. Yeah. And so what, what about that process got you? I was interested in the smoke. I'm like, wow, they're releasing black smoke in the middle of Rome. Like, how can that be... Like, healthy? Or... Healthy. And, like, I was like, what do they do? Like, how do they make the things? And I was thinking about, like, smoke as, um, as a way of communication, but also, like, the black and white... Um, kind of, you know, uh, diametrically opposing one another. I thought that was interesting. So I needed to find out how to get, I wanted to first figure out what the, they used in Rome, the Roman formulas. And what did you, what did you find? Did you learn? And I found that this was way above my head. Like I'm not, I yeah. like basically failed chemistry. Really? Um, like uh, uh, priests are like above your ability to understand well, they, they, uh, their, they, their they, understanding of fire or they hire someone? Well, they've been using the same formulas for a long time and I don't know where they get their I'm sure it's not the priests like doing the actual mixing. <laughs> I would like to think. I don't that. know where they get their, their materials from. <laughs> the pyrotechnic priest is, is a fantasy yeah. that I want to hold on to. Um, well, it's better than other things. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with a P as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a weird relationship with the Catholic Church, so I, I'm not going to ask too many questions about it, but I did grow up in like the midst of it, and I have like nostalgia for it in a way that I don't think like any other Catholics really do have because there's no like intense art in Latin America that, I mean, you know, like the, the real problematic churches are the ones that have all the nice art, you know, like the, <laughs> there's a relationship the colonial, there. Yeah. The colonial ones. Yeah. Well, I grew up as a non-Catholic going to a Catholic elementary school. Oh, uh, American so that, Catholicism is, so that is was weird. Elusive to me too. I was like, you know, not 
allowed to do anything. I couldn't do communion. I couldn't do confirmation. I couldn't, wow. but I had to do all the rosary. I had to do all the work. You know, so it's just, I got the work, but I got none of the fun. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. And I think that's the wafers of, are pretty good. I know. I, I, once I was like, I'm going to have a wafer today. And I went up there and the teacher grabbed me by the arm and dragged me out of the, out of the cathedral. That kind of, you know. And like, I, th I think that influenced my art a lot more than say Boy Scouts. <laughs> yeah, how do you feel the the rage in the fire the rage of the fire <laughs> no yeah. just like being like you know the out the outcast the outsider yeah that's a weird place to be an outsider class. too because like yeah. the rituals of catholicism for at least it took me a while you know as a kid not being embedded in it to see like oh like how weird most of and morbid most of it is but like, if you're not a non-believer and you're just like doing the rituals and going through the motions, it must be wild. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember all the stuff, but I just like, yeah, don't have that. But you don't have Catholic guilt? I probably have Catholic guilt somehow, but <laughs> I was, I was raised Presbyterian. So what's, uh, what, what, what's, what are you guys, how do you, how do you di I, uh, differentiate yourselves from every other Christian? Um, yeah. What is the. I mean, it's Protestant, but I can't remember the exact, um, you know, delineation between other yeah. denominations. I'll talk about. I mean, I haven't I haven't been an active churchgoer <laughs> in thirty years. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess it it, it didn't have uh, as enough art to make an impression. I guess because, like, uh, that's one of the things. I mean, it's interesting how American churches are like Protestants, so they're like not about bling and all of that. But I also think it has to do with the church just not being that powerful in the same way that it was. I mean, or maybe it is powerful in a different way. But like the the Roman church was just like, you know, pillage and, and the other word that I don't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. So then fire and your friend. So uh, you introduce your friend. Let's get a, a little background. Okay. So I, um, was wanting to do these pictures of smoke. Okay. I had some ideas, but I needed to get my hands on some material to, to make smoke. I didn't want to use like, you know, smoke grenades or something. I know I needed something more robust. Okay. And I started making some phone calls and looking online and I talked to a few uh, Hollywood places that deal with pyrotechnics and was immediately like, no, it's not going to happen for you. Really? There's so much red um, tape and liability concerns when it comes to anything pyrotechnic in California. But I was headed to uh, Nebraska for an artist residency, and online I found this guy who, um, Ken Miller, who's the gentleman to the left of me here and uh to your right and he um was sure it's like sure i'll send you some stuff i just can't <laughs> send it to california and i was like well that's good news i'm going to nebraska and he's like okay i'll send it there and i was doing an artist residency at bemis which is one of the best artist residency programs i think in the country mm -hmm. and i got to use this ten thousand square foot sculpture studio to basically set off my smoke bomb I smoke what, material. Did you not have ver ventilation concerns or? Well, I needed, well, it was a, a big enough space where they had big roll up uh, garage doors. Okay. So I could like do a couple of shots, roll, roll up, up the garage yeah. doors. And I also did it like at from one in the morning till five in the morning. So, you know, no one else was there. And <laughs> by the time the next artist rolled in at like noon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, didn't smell bad. So then what, what, what are you looking? I mean, cause one of the things that they always used to say in photography class is that the cigarettes are always very interesting in pictures or not always very interesting, but tend to help up, uh, the photograph because of the smoke, because of a bunch of different factors are, are, is that, is it, do you, what are you looking for in the smoke? What are you trying to like get? Is it, you just want it to look like smoke or are you trying to make it look like something else, you know? Well, um, just to pin it down since we're talking and we don't have a visual reference. Well, I guess the best way to describe this to smoke would be aggressive smoke. It's very, okay. it's like, uh, 
kind of like what you would, if you the last week, there was the, or a couple weeks ago, there was the train derailment in yeah, yeah. Um, Ohio. And then the authorities decided to do a controlled burn of all the materials that were on the side of the tracks. And that sent up this giant, enormous cloud of smoke, like a pyrocumulus cloud reminiscent of the smoke columns from wildfires. So I was kind of going for that on a small scale, mm -hmm. but I also wanted it to, um, interact like the black and the white smoke. So I would, I purposely got the two different, uh, compounds that would make the different color smoke and I would put them together in a way that they would be fighting with one another. Mm -hmm. That's crazy that it's that difficult to get for artists to get that. I would, uh, who else is like, <laughs> I, is, uh, I mean, I guess maybe it's too expensive for most artists. Like, wh how, how much are these compounds? Is it really? It's not. A, they're is, they're really cheap. So um, then, I guess it's a safety issue. It's a safety issue for sure. Yeah, it's not. It's not a. Well, anytime you have pyrotechnics like on a set Hollywood set, you have to have like a special, uh, special card. Like yeah, yeah. A red card, I think, it requires all this training and all this. Like, you have to be bonded, I think, and you have to. There's a lot of concerns. Do you, you know who Jack Parsons is? I, I, I'm assuming. Yeah. Because if you're into this stuff, so <laughs> you know, right, he I had think... no training at all. <laughs> well, and they also just did. just blow the... shit up. That's JPL, by the way, for people that don't know. Well, they used to do it on campus. At... Yeah. <laughs> and then they were like, you know, can you go over to the Rose Bowl and do this stuff? <laughs> and I, I guess... just listened to a series on him. He's hilarious. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I guess it's still a super fun site. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. And uh, what's the super fun for people that may not know? Oh, it's like when um, there's a there's a toxic uh, danger of uh, somewhere that's so great that they have to spend a lot of money to clean it up. Okay, I also ask because sometimes I confuse it with the book Snow Crash because they have the opposite, which is like places that are so toxic that they just are dead zones. But it's a that's a sci-fi novel. But, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I think that's probably, kind of <laughs> well, this is like a, an area of the Oreo Seco that's just above the Rose Bowl, uh -huh. just right next to JPL. And that's why JPL is there. But, uh, my son goes to camp there. So I guess he plays like in the dry, dry riverbed and <laughs> I don't know. I was like, okay, I guess, and I he, guess it's okay. I guess it's all gone. It's all he, jet fuel and stuff from the forties and fifties. So he hasn't grown a tail or anything? Not yet. <laughs> Knock on wood. This not, is wood. Not for that reason. <laughs> oh, he's a he's a bit of a devil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, exactly. A hellraiser. I meant not a devil. That's a hellraiser's cuter. Uh, cool, man. So then, uh, tell me a little bit more about like your relationship because it sounds like uh, a pretty interesting character. Yeah. So so Ken um, agreed to send me this material. It took me calling him every day for two months. Okay. To get it. And he's like, oh yeah, it'll be out tomorrow. And like, I would send to FedEx and FedEx would go and they would, I get the, <laughs> I get the thing on the email saying that it wasn't picked up. And then I'd call again and he'd be like, oh yeah, it's, it's definitely out there. <laughs> Have them come back and let's just go on for a month. And then at a certain point, my, my wife actually grew up, um, he, Ken lives in Southern Minnesota, right on the Iowa border. And my wife grew up, um, not too far from there. Mm -hmm. and my mother-in-law still lived near there and I was like I'm gonna have to send her down there to go pick the stuff up but eventually one day it finally came in this little box and this stuff was amazing what like it must have been pretty exciting that's like a little yeah Christmas, I was like right? wow this is actually coming and like this was like my big project I was gonna work on there and I it didn't come until like the the like end of the second month of my three-month residency oh wow so I had a month to like play around with this which eventually turned into years I was working with this material <laughs> and with him. And, and, and so you, have you branched out into any other materials or is this specific compound? So I started with this, with this, uh, black it's, and white smoke. It's, it, that's just what the industry term for it is? Uh, binary smoke. Binary. Oh, binary smoke because it comes in a, a two part. There's the accelerant and there's the fuel. Okay. And when you mix them together, um, I think I'm not, maybe I don't quite have that right. Anyway, I'm, like I said before, I'm not good at chemistry, but you have the A and the B. You put them together and now it's like, uh, um, it starts to react. It can react when you, when you light it on fire. Okay. So it's as pretty a, inert, you know, you can send it in the U S uh, it was sent by U S mail. That's why it's split into all two fine. Parts. It would be like in one package with like two sealed, um, 
vacuum sealed uh silver lined um packaging yeah and it was good it was fine and then i put them to, i'd mix a little bit up and i would set it on fire and i was shooting these um against a white backdrop uh with um strobe lights uh-huh and it was almost like a model shoot of the, this of the smoke and i would do it over and over again and and, w- and what did you feel like you were getting out of that is it is it a is it the aggression is it the is there like a concept behind what you're trying to do or is it sim- or is it specifically about the fetish of the uh, object of smoke well it it was about a couple of different things. I was I was thinking about wildfires. I was mm-hmm. thinking about ways to 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 make surrogates for those, mm-hmm. in a way that so these these I was making these smoke columns, but they were they weren't they weren't in the natural landscape. They were against black or against white, um, just studio yeah, fields, yeah. and you couldn't tell how big they were, and they were also very like the the way that the smoke moved because I was capturing them with strobe, so they were they were just quick moments. Mm-hmm thousandth of a second and you'd capture these these fairly aggressive swirling and if you're using strobes there's no blur right or yeah there's there's no blur it's it's all crisp it's all crisp yeah 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 um that's interesting and then uh so then ken it's you so he sounds like a little bit of a flake there's a little bit of a flake so i i mean so he sent me this one thing and i I treated that stuff like gold because I was like, I'm never going to get this again. <laughs> it was so hard it to get. It was so the hard first. to get. Yeah. And uh, I made these, I think I made about 10 photographs and they were like probably my most successful selling photographs to date. Uh-huh. And they were like all gone immediately. Um, wow, but, that's exciting. Yeah, I, it was pretty now, exciting. Now I'm curious, like, uh, you know, but that's the whole point of this show we create. Yeah. Show. You got to you got to go look at Kevin Cooley's work. Yeah. Is this is any of this stuff uh, available on your Instagram or website? Uh the the series is archived on my website and occasionally one of them will pop up. Um, What's the series called so people can find uh, it? Controlled Burns. Controlled Burns. Okay. Oh, very very relevant. <laughs> very relevant. I mean, I want I definitely want to acknowledge that I'm going to limit how much we talk about Ohio because I am not a show that tackles that kind of stuff right. and people are getting in trouble. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> and I just feel bad for everybody that is suffering, but you know, yeah, th- there's a, there's, it's not a marketplace of, of uh, talking about these things anymore, but um, so, okay. So then, so then you, you get the, the piece, you ha- what happens when you, I, I don't want to like make it like, a drug analogy, <laughs> but what happens when you run out of the coke? <laughs> exactly, I, I, I was, I, I, forever I had a little bit left of it. I was using like teaspoons of this stuff, <laughs> and when I, I finally called him again and asked him if I can get more, and he was like, "You still have some? I sent you so little." And I was like, "Well, that's not the issue. The issue is he won't send it to me." So you know, like. When I was back in California, I mean, I did the residency, I did those things, and I wanted to do more, and I convinced him to finally send me more. It took months. And it must have been more complicated because he couldn't send it to California, he said? Well, I guess he changed his mind, and he was fine with it. I don't know. Oh, okay. So So suddenly it wasn't an issue, and he sent me some more, and then I, um, he kept on talking about, like, how he has colored smoke. Okay. And something that happened, like, I guess around 2016 with the election, I was I was wanting to go, well, I'd, I'd done the project and I'd stopped and moved on to something else. Mm -hmm. And then around 2016 or 2015, I was thinking about the election. I was like thinking I needed to do some more smoke stuff. And I wanted to now take it out into the landscape, into the desert landscape and maybe add some color and try to get it to match like uh, the beautiful sunsets and try to make it Mm -hmm. integrate differently into uh, the environment, visually speaking. And then, so then, did you, do you, uh, does this, so we kill some anticipation. Do we ever get into explosives or is it mostly smoke? We start with smoke. <laughs> and. Because we said pyrotechnics. <laughs> right. So we start with smoke. Now I'm doing colored smoke that he's sending me. Okay. And uh, we're like having like conversations like once or twice a week now. Okay. So now, now he's guys... very responsive to me. He's calling me back. He's sending me smoke. He wants to know how it's going. He wants me to send him pictures. Are you like, is it, 
is he excited that he's making money sending this to you or is is it you just get you guys just click or he's into that the fact that you're into what he's doing how 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 are like what got him what do you think got him like engaged with you because he seems to stand off at first well i think he was suspicious of me at first okay. at first and uh then he realized you were insane like he realized <laughs> he's like oh he's an artist he's doing these weird pictures with my stuff because he sells his stuff to i don't know he cartels says, yeah cartels <laughs> well he said he had a military contract at some point he said it's a foreign militaries the nfl different different places that he would sell his stuff and as eccentric as we're making him out to be, we got to remember that he is a chemist. Like he's, he's a chemist. Yeah, he's, he's, he's like he's, legit knows his stuff. That's all he's ever done. His whole life has done this chemistry. Then he met me and uh, started selling me this stuff. Sounds a lot like drugs now. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it probably, like you just started it off saying that, it, that yeah. there was red tape. So there was red tape and now I got the illegal stuff. <laughs> Like, this is all incriminating. I, I'm going to be, uh, do you know who, uh, oh, what's his name? Vlad TV. He like interviews uh, people and then they like incriminate themselves and then they get in trouble and he's like, it's not my fault. Yeah. Let's get some to say it. <laughs> so I'm Vlad TVing you right now. Well, I was using like little like <laughs> teaspoons of this stuff on a little setup. <laughs> and then they look gigantic so <laughs> <laughs> yeah the cia that's listening to this right yeah. now is like or the fbi actually because this is they you know well i'll get to that later because <laughs> there, there are there, there, there are <laughs> there are federal agencies involved federal agencies get involved <laughs> all right okay so um so then they already know this story. <laughs> they already know that the, the story is already out there. Oh, okay. Okay. We can relax guys. <laughs> so a couple of years later, my, my brother-in-law, unfortunately he passes away. Okay. And, um, going to Minnesota for the funeral and I decide to tack on a couple of extra days where I'm going to go down and visit, um, this guy. Mm -hmm. And I tell my wife, I say, if you don't hear from me in three hours, like I'm either dead <laughs> or I'm having a great time. <laughs> okay that's a good she's like okay whatever as a spouse that's, that's comforting i'm sure a very comforting so i go down there and i'm just blown away uh -huh. by what this guy has going on he is just he lives on this dilapidated farm and the whole place is punctuated by giant blast holes where he's blowing <laughs> blowing stuff up his entire inside of his house every every horizontal surface has some firework stuff on it he has a a mad scientist laboratory with piles of i don't know what's going on i'm just yeah, yeah and he's trying to show off for me he's like oh let's do this and he's like making these big explosions <laughs> and there's so much going on and i was just could not believe myself and i was like decided i needed to come back yeah, and yeah. work with him and make photographs there with him in with him present yeah yeah so i'm like i can't do this in california he's like i can't go out of my you know my front lawn and set off anything so wait, we're in Minnesota? In Minnesota. So, so, okay, so I didn't know if we were crossing a state line to get south to him. No, but yeah, he's in Minnesota by the... But I don't... I mean, what he's doing probably isn't legal there either. <laughs> but uh, but you don't want to get beat by LA but cops. He, but, he's in a, but he's on a farm and there's nobody around for yeah, miles. Yeah. And it seems like the locals tolerate him. Yeah. So I, I go back over several um visits and photographed him just doing his stuff making his stuff and also doing things um for me and i end up publishing this stuff in uh, popular science mm. real quick is there a lab set up like how is the yeah we, we we get a sense of the farm okay how where does he make the stuff so uh he lives in the bottom of this hill and at the top of the hill okay. there's a clearing okay and there's a his laboratories up all right. And he has this, from this, it's also still a farm, but there's like a commanding view over, it's pretty close to the Mississippi River, so you can see all the way over to um, Wisconsin. Okay. Just very... And it, is it is it a clean lab? Is it, It's not a clean it's, lab. It's like meth lab -y? I'm well, not to, not to use that, because I, I, not to continue like maligning your friend, <laughs> like associating him with drug metaphors, but is it like... Well, I've never been to a meth lab, but, um, <laughs> I mean the breaking bad sets. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
In Breaking Bad, all the labs are like very clean and <laughs> well. Orderly. I mean, I, in, when they're in the trailer, they're they're you know, is it yeah. like is that is it that kind of a vibe? Well, it's kind of like it's it's just mad chaos kind of vibe. Okay, so it's like an artist studio then. Yeah, it's an artist studio, but you know the the art is making smoke grenades. Yeah, yeah. So there's just like piles of it's just a giant mess. Wait, do, he has like uh other means of like other than he's got other stuff he's got like sticks and of dynamite and whatnot it no 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 he's, he's like when grenade when you say grenade what is he oh a uh, smoke grenade is like a like a like just a smoke generator that you buy like at a um, novelty like fourth of july kind of store okay it looks like a like a world war uh, sorry a vietnam era grenade that you light and then just sets off smoke that I, I, I'm blown away by the distinction between the, the two war style grenades, but that's pretty good. I don't think you play video games. Do you? Uh, I haven't since I was a kid. Yeah. So that comes from like outside knowledge. That's not like from playing Call of Duty. No, this is from actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, so let me he, show you my collection. <laughs> my collection of grenades. Anyway, so I s submit all these crazy pictures to, um. Well, I had them in my portfolio and I happened to be showing them to the photo editor at um, Popular Science. And he's like, wow, this is fantastic. We're doing a danger <laughs> um, uh, a magazine, a danger issue. Like, let's, this would be perfect for it. So I'm like, okay, let me ask him. And Ken says, sure, that sounds great. And they want me to go out there again and do more. So I go out there again on their dime. I do more with them. We publish all these, we publish like a 14 or 16 page spread about wow. him making stuff. Like he's also. That's a lot, dude, for popular science. Yeah. It was, it was, it was a big spread. Yeah. It was yeah. a lot of, it was also all photos, a little bit of text. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, a lot of it focused on what he calls his, um, space program, <laughs> which is he would get a lot of, um, his, his, one of his main businesses besides building smoke generators um would be to get all the the leftover expired pyrotechnic uh, materials from cruise ships okay like their um, emergency flares their like uh line throwing guns that throw like um life preservers out into the ocean wow like, i didn't even he, know that existed that's cool they have all the stuff that that has to be dealt. all the shirt cannons yeah, <laughs> all the short <shore laughs> cannons. So he would get like by the pallet load, he'd get the stuff from these cruise companies. And they're expired in the sense that the chemicals are expired, not expired in the sense that they've been used or, or am I misunderstanding? They just have a shelf life. Yeah, yeah. They're, I mean, it's, it's just like your It's like expired medicine. It's like yeah. expired bacon, you know? Like yeah, yeah. Three years later, you still want to eat it. <laughs> it's just dangerous. You don't know what's going to happen. But yeah, he, yeah. Would, he would take these things apart and build like uh, multi-stage rockets out of it. And they were just wildly dangerous. But he's reusing the, the expired chemicals. He's not using the shells or anything like that. Well, they don't, they don't have any explosions. They're just, per, they were just like, uh, like, you know, if you have a marine distress flare, it, it shoots up in the air and has a parachute. It comes down on a parachute. And it has an illumination. No, but what I'm what I'm asking is: is he taking? Is he he's using the expired chemicals, or or is he using all the paraphernalia around that contains the chemicals and, and oh. getting rid of the chemicals? Well, the chemicals are staying in there in, in the thing. He's just mod modifying the 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 flare to become a multi stage rocket. Okay. So he's like changing the the profile. And what a multi-stage He's, rocket just means it's a rocket that just drops parts. You know how like when they go to the moon, they have like the rocket takes off and then part of it falls off and more of it goes. And then yeah. It, it's like that. So okay. he would build these like three stage things. And the idea would buzz, he could get up to like 10,000 feet or however far he thought. So the first stage would go off and then it would ignite the second stage. Although what would happen was it wouldn't be going straight up. It would start to be going down. So now it's going down. <laughs> with an acceleration so these were wildly dangerous crazy things and were there any exploded shacks on the land <laughs> no he he wouldn't put explosives up in the air okay he was just building these like what he called for his space program all right which was you know just high altitude he used to be part of a big rocketry club that sent some balloon up into the stratosphere 
Has he has, at ten thousand feet? Would that be like the height of how far he's gotten? Uh, he would probably say further, but like you know, ten thousand feet. That's I don't even know how much that is in the context of like. Uh, I don't know how much a mile is. <laughs> well, it's about two like mile high. I'm t I'm using Denver as a <laughs> right. It's about two miles. Two miles. Okay. Yeah. Ten thousand. So feet, it's two roughly. two two uh, Denvers. Two Denvers and like you know that that's like all federal airspace up there. Like you can't. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see that recently? There was a video of uh, of the two airplanes that almost landed on top of each other. Oh, a JFK. I think know, so. Yeah, almost like it, taking off and almost crossing the runway. It, uh, or, or what? Yeah. Well, I think they were just like kind of running parallel to each other. One was about it was a FedEx and then a, a, a JetBlue. Doesn't matter. Oh, I didn't see that one. Anyway, that was crazy. <laughs> there wow. was there was like uh, there were hearings about it, and uh, all the right wingers were. Uh, it's so funny, like to see just a bunch of politicians that don't do anything just get their shots in like on either side. I'm not like, I'm not trying to alienate anybody, but just like performative, like, do you think this is a good idea? You know? And of course they start making it about pronouns and whatnot because the apparently anyway, it, the, I'll check it out later. <laughs> that sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it's a wild thing that just happened. But anyway, go ahead. So, so okay. So then, so then, how big is this? Like space pro is is space program the focus of everything he does, or does he have a space program and then like uh, a different thing that he works on that's like a different area so his, of research? His money making gig was selling pyrotechnic smoke generators. And then his art was space. And program. then his like spare time, I wouldn't call it art, was taking apart these. <laughs> you wouldn't call it art? <laughs> he wouldn't call it art either. He wouldn't be upset by that. <laughs> he was just, you know, something to do. Yeah, yeah. He had yeah. all this material and, you know, was free and he could do what he wanted with, with it. And he was making multi-stage rockets, which um, was shown in the magazine. And the magazine landed on the desk of an ATF. Okay. Office somewhere. And they were like, what's going on here? This guy's showing off all this stuff. And like, they're like, that's illegal. That's illegal. That's illegal. Like, if that's what he's like, federally publicly... illegal not, or, or just in the state. Do you know? Well, federal stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. I mean, they're, they're involved, right? Yeah. So they, um, well, I guess taking apart materials that are meant to be for safety distressed you can't take that stuff apart and build something out that that's totally illegal oh i didn't know that okay yeah he didn't know that either also the <laughs> guyver would have been in so much trouble <laughs> yeah <laughs> so very that's like a joke for all the old people <laughs> uh, so it kind of bo i mean kind of bo also he used these like uh, electronic ignition which is like a electronic match okay so like light off his materials and that's also illegal like all these little technical things and they were caught their attention and they were like, okay, if he's doing this and he's showing this in the magazine, like what else is this guy doing? Because he looks like a giant mess. To be fair, the things that are illegal sound really fun. They do like, sound really fun. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so then so that's really scary then at that point. Like how do you, do, how, how do you become aware of this? Uh, I, because obviously we're hearing it from your perspective. So like he, he reaches out to you and he tells you that he's got been raided. You hear about there it on the a, news. So, um, his wife calls me one afternoon and, um, my, my son answered my phone. who was probably five at the time. Or, and he's like, daddy, it's, it's Ken's wife. I'm like, okay. And she's in tears. And she said that the, the, um, they just got raided. Okay. And when they say raided, they mean like, 60 people showed up at their house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every agency around the federals, locals. I'm sure they don't take this lightly. At yeah. gunpoint. Yeah. And they took a bunch of stuff from his house, from his lab. It was on the news. It was in the... Uh... That's actually kind of scary when you think of Ruby Ridge that they even come to your house. Because, like, that is essentially what happened there, except they just shot, you know? And then, you, do you know what happened in Ruby Ridge? No. Well, let's remind our viewers. <laughs> so, our so I, I think if I'm not mistaken, basically they killed his wife because they fired on her and, and, and then, and then they kept 
telling him to let his wife go because they didn't know that it that killed her so they thought that he w- they were taunting him <laughs> it was really fucking dark anyway sorry let's go back to the light but that's terrifying because like i i mean that's like calling the cops on black people level of like dangerous i don't trust that i mean the cia and the fbi are completely re- reasonable organizations never mind <laughs> well, it was tremendous overkill for, for <laughs> yeah, this guy's that's what operation. I'm saying, yeah. But uh, if I can grab my phone real quick. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I think maybe we should have started the whole conversation here, but. No, it's okay. Ken recently um, sent me this. He looked himself up on chat GPT. And this is the answer it gave back. I don't have up to date access or legal records, but based on my previous knowledge, Kenneth Ray Miller is a former resident of Brownsville, Minnesota, who was arrested and convicted, convicted for possession of explosive materials and for allegedly planning to blow up the Monticello nuclear power plant in Minnesota. Oh, wow. In 2011, Miller was sentenced to 57 months in federal prison for the possession of the explosive materials, which he had obtained for the purpose of building a bomb. He was also accused of planning to attack the Monticello nuclear power plant, but there's no indication that he was ever charged or convicted on those specific charges. Wow. So this so is that, what's on ChatGPT right now. What, how long ago was this? This was a couple of days ago he gave me this. No, uh, how long ago was the raid? The raid happened... Because um, this starts around 2016, right? That's so, when you start to make contact with him. So the raid happened in uh, 2019? 2019. So right before COVID. Just before COVID. Okay. So then catch us up today between that and now. Is he, is is he, was, was that what he was charged with? So he, okay. So there's a lot that's not true about this. And there's a lot that I've Googled that you can't even find on Google. I don't know where this is coming from. uh, So I'll tell you what's, what's true and what's not. Well, he, he wasn't trying to blow up a nuclear reactor. I, I mean, we can start there. We can start there. That's, uh, yeah. that's, that's nothing to do with that. I don't know where that comes from. And that's crazy that that's the first thing that comes up. In, in GPT, that's insane. For this guy. Like, yeah. He, is, he, is, he was convicted for possession of explosive materials. There was nothing about building a bomb. Can I tell you what Chad GPT said when I asked who I was? Oh, yeah. What did it say for you? It said that I may not be a famous enough artist to make it, but that there's no information on me. And it may just be because I'm not well known enough. So I was like, fair enough. It's kind of mean. <laughs> that is kind of mean. But, but I mean, hey, I'm, I, but I'm just saying it's much better than much that. Much better than having, <laughs> I mean, a nuclear power plant. Yeah, that's terrifying. So then, okay. So like okay. This, this guy is like a you know he's an ex-con yeah and this is what information is out there he's trying he's trying to find work trying to get a job like okay he blew up a nuclear i mean no one's going to hire you first of all getting an ex-con and getting a job as an ex-con is already a huge hurdle quick question 57 months do you know how much that is in years just because i'm not good at math that's That's, like three years ish yeah it's less than that a little less than three years so yeah man that's fucking mind-blowing um so what does he think is happening with that? What does he think that they're scraping things that we don't have access to that Google, or is it, it could also just be that you can't Google it. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like those documents may be out there, but you are not finding it. Uh, cause I've, I've seen, I've seen like, uh, recently I've seen stuff where people Google something and they can't find it. And then they Google it on DuckDuckGo. So I wonder if you look, have you tried DuckDuckGo? I mean, not that that's like a legit, it just, it's just, they sold out a little bit, but it is still like a, one of the better search engines for that. Have you tried uh, something like that? That would be interesting. I haven't tried that, but I, I, I have not seen, I mean, I know probably yeah, yeah. more about him than anyone else. No, no, no. And I, I know. I don't know where the information is coming from. So I'm trying to say. Yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah. No, yeah, I, I, now I'm curious. Well, okay, so then I would recommend doing that just to see, like, if anything comes up. Because that's, cause to me, it's mind-blowing if there's, like, some covert documents that ChatGPT can get to. That's fucking crazy. Like, that's a huge security risk to begin with, right? Like, right. I don't, I, I mean, there's so many things that could be happening with that. That's fucking wild. Uh, all right, so then what does he feel? Okay, so he, he's been, he was in 2019... And so he's out by now. How long has he been out? 
He's been out for several months now. Several months. Okay. Yeah. So he, that's how this comes up. He's going, trying to go back into the workforce. G, Chat GPT comes out. He, he, it's the new Google yourself. Uh, and then he finds this out. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. So what, what, where are you guys at with that? Like, what do you, what do you think is happening? I, I really don't know. What was the case against him? What did they convict him for? Ju like, cause that's. Well, they, they found that he had, um, materials that you could use to make explosives. Okay. And then that's what they charged him with. And they charged him with possession of that. Um, and like distribution of that. But not. But. The intention of terrorism. Yeah. The terrorism, any kind of bomb building or. I mean, he was selling, the only thing he was selling was smoke generators. Smoke bombs. Yeah, not even like straight up explosives. Those, were, are, those were private. And anything to do with explosives, he was doing on his own, on his own property. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't smart. And he had the, the space program, which I guess is dangerous, but it's yeah pretty far away from trying to blow up a nuclear power plant. Wow. Yeah. Well, hopefully employers aren't using chat GBT. <laughs> like, well, hopefully they just assume that everybody's in the same state as me and they'll, it'll get like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> right. It's better to be anonymous than to be a... I know. I'm fucking that up right now. <laughs> Alleged. A... <laughs> I'm like constantly aware of that. <laughs> I'm like high key more giving away personal information for the system because i mean if i do enough of these people can definitely uh ai me deep fake me oh yeah that's like that's a that's a weird thing to like be like on the be generating the content that can lead to that that's a, a, a mind fuck. what do you have any weird relationship with chat gpt have you played with it at all have you found any strange stuff Cause like most of my uses has just, just been like tame. Like my, my mom asked me how to do, how to write an artist statement. And I was like, ask chat GPT, you know? And I looked and I, and I looked at the difference between a artist statement and an artist bio. And I showed her the difference between those two. So she would have like an idea of like not too much personal information, but man, I'm almost scared to ask like really I'm scared to ask questions that would lead to information like that deliberately. You know, like, uh, I don't want to, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like for some reason, does that make sense to be more afraid of it than like a search engine, even though it's the, ultimately it's the same thing. They're just getting da data on you the same way, your search queries, right? Yeah, but, but is it that? It doesn't sound like it's that. Like, we're just based on this. I don't want to search myself at all. Yeah. I mean, this is, seems like it's fabricated out of whole cloth. I have no idea. There's no... I, I worry that there's like maybe internal memos or some shit that's getting scraped because it, it sounds like something that you would want to pin something on, it's pin on someone that you throw 60 people at, you know, like, cause I mean, we got to be careful what we say here, but in terms of like CIA infiltrating organizations that let and then later you know or busting organizations and later we find out that there's a lot of embedded cia people involved right like you know and i'm not talking about any specific thing i'm just saying that it's happened with the war on terror just to be safe right because on youtube you got to be very careful with these things but i i i would not be surprised if that is where that's coming from you know like because that is a narrative that's not just like like, can you read the part about? It's a the... nasty narrative. It is. It is insane. I'm. I'm baffled by that. W which part do you want to read? The just like the the part about the uh, the intention to blow up the thing. If you can find it easy. If not, it's okay. It's only a couple of sentences. He was a former resident of Brownsville, Minnesota. That part is true. Well, he's actually a current resident, but who was arrested and convicted for possession of explosive materials and for allegedly planning to blow up the Monticello nuclear power plant in Minnesota. It's strange that it says allegedly on the false thing, right? He was convicted for this and allegedly, you know, so like that is interesting language right there because if he was convicted, you wouldn't say allegedly. Does that make sense to what I'm saying? 
Yeah, and it's like, is he was he arrested for allegedly doing something at this? He was arrested or convicted. What did it say? It says, well, he says Arrest- was arrested and convicted for possession of explosive materials. It sounds like there should be a comma after that, and for allegedly planning to blow up the Monticello nuclear power but, plant. But why is an alleged that? I mean, I'm not, I know you don't know, but like, <laughs> but in terms of like, it just seems strange that the thing that's blatantly false, right? Because w- would you consider the, uh, the, the smoke stuff explosive materials legally or, or is well, that, is that, that also incorrect? No, no, I think it is. Um, I mean, to go back more into him, like he's been doing this for 40 years. Yeah. He's got a reputation probably he's, and a track record. Yeah. Yeah. And like he had sp- He's had several other interactions with the ATF, one of which was because his, his um, lab burnt down and his partner was killed in the fire. Wow. And they were doing the same things then, and the ATF didn't have a problem with it. And he thought he was doing something that was legal. Yeah. And it turns out, it, I guess it technically wasn't. That's fucking crazy. I can't get but, over that. I mean, like, but, but, it, but do, do you understand why I'm saying that it's strange that it's legal? Like, no, I, I understand what I, you're saying. Yeah, exactly. It, that, that it says allegedly on the fake, the straight up like fabricated part. Cause it like, cause in terms of language, you would never say someone was convicted something of something allegedly. Once they're convicted, they are a murderer. They're not an alleged murderer. You right. can't be sued for that. Yeah. So it is also like, oh man. But it's like, there's no reference for it anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, like if I, he was arrested, if that was part of his thing, it would come up because this has been in the news. Yeah. Um, the, certainly the local um, news in if Minnesota. It was in, if it was in popu- popular science, I'm in sure that, that, sci- that narrative of the guy getting busted because of go- is like just press that is waiting to be made, right? Like you, Like that's a story right there. You yeah. don't have, <laughs> it, it's a story that materializes itself and it comes to you. You don't have to like really do that much hard work as a journalist. Right. So. Yeah, there's a, it's a fascinating story there. And I've, I put together an entire book about it. Oh, really? Yeah. It's an artist, it's an artist book. It started off as a photography book that was going to be published by a German publisher. And we were set to, we were set to send it to the printer the week, um, same week he got arrested and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what happens with this. <laughs> we can't, we can't do a book without talking about this. Like, let's yeah, see what yeah, happens. Yeah. So a couple of years, uh, two years later, I have a much different book than what I originally had and the publisher was no longer interested. Yeah, yeah. But you got to make the, the book. You so can't, I'm, I'm yeah, trying yeah. to make it. It's, yeah. it's, um, it's a book without a home, but there's a lot going on. Yeah, yeah. How's he doing? Like mentally? Set, Terrible. Like, yeah, I would imagine, right? And something like this is just even, I mean, he's not going to get it. He knows he's not going to, he's, he's in his early 60s. Yeah. He's a, a basically unemployable, even without a conviction of anything. Yeah. He's only got one skill, which is his pyrotechnics thing. And that's not exactly. He can't exactly, get back into it. Well, he, the, part of his punishment is he cannot, part of his punishment, part of his, um, his punishment. Uh, his punishment. His sentencing. Sentencing, yeah. yeah, is that he can't touch his, his toolbox anymore. Wow. You know, no more, uh, it's, no more. It's like when they ban hackers from, but he wasn't, ha- like, he wasn't hurting anybody. He was just on his own. That is fucking crazy. I, I mean, I wish I had, like, something profound to say. What, what is, so what do you think, what is the book looking like now? Is there, are the, do you have any thoughts that I am not equipped to ask questions of about this? Because... I'm just hearing about it and like, what do, what do you think? What are your thoughts on all of this? On him or the book or both? Or, or just a, in general, like, where are you at with the, so like we got to the bombshell, which was this thing, like where, and you got this two days ago. So you're still processing that for some, to some degree, but like, what does the book look like? What, what is the main takeaway from this that you're getting? Like the book is something in between a book of my photographs, my art photographs, uh, a docu, like a document, straight up doc documentation of his life mm-hmm. and an art book. Mm-hmm. It's got letters that he's written from prison to me. It's got, uh, uh, news clippings of him looking out, looking to be a, a person that's out to hurt people, which he's not, he's more of a goofball uh-huh. and just a little sloppy. Yeah. Um, but it's an interesting 
look at someone's life in rural America. In, yeah. At this, at this point in time, like not only was his industry, his industry had left the United States years ago. He used to make a lot of money. Where did, where's the, where's most of the pyrotechnic stuff being? I mean, a lot of it's in, in China. Okay. If it happens at all. I mean, fireworks are largely illegal for the most part. Yeah. Although there's plenty of fireworks in Los Angeles. <laughs> Fourth of July. Yeah. All that stuff is from China. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and you know, he's he has has a Does he still have his property or did that get seized? Well, he doesn't own this property. It's like a uh he rents it. Yeah. And um you know, it's in bad, bad disrepair and you the repairs know. take money. Yeah, it's I mean it's a whole other story, but I mean, I think there's an interesting story there. Um, we were talking with uh, the Discovery Channel about doing something on him, and they passed, and boy, did they miss out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so this was before that. This was during the, uh, this was before the raid that you were trying to get them involved? Yeah, well, they, they had reached out um, after the article, but before the arrest. Uh-huh. Yeah. And they wanted to just, like, follow him around, but... There's a lot of drama that could have could have been generated out of all this. Yeah, I don't know. I think that um, I think the book that I put together was was quite interesting. I think that um, you know, the, with I think with the right, I'm thinking maybe my design is not telling the story in the right way. But, yeah. Um, I think it could be packaged together in a way that would really tell his story in a compelling and thoughtful way. How do you go about doing something like that? Would you reach out to an editor or or a designer to help you, like maybe nail that a little bit better, or would you just go into doing more? Just, yeah, I've spoken with, a, with with um, I mean, with book consultants, I've uh, reached out to every sort of art book photo publisher, and they're still not not interested. Or how did actually? That's a great question. How does that work? Because I know that you and uh, former co-host uh, Seth Lo uh, Lower. Mm -hmm. are active in and i know cameron crone uh just got uh, something in the mocha store like how do you approach is that is that a, a specifically photo uh, most of you are photographers the people that i just named right so mm -hmm. is that mostly a realm for you guys to get books done or do uh, uh, do you know other artists that work in other fields that try to get books printed? I don't want to leave the the fascinating point, but I just really don't know what else to ask. Like, uh, <laughs> what else to ask? I just feel bad for him. But since you you are well versed in in shopping books around, how does that process work? Just uh, well, on I, the basis? I don't know if I'm well versed. I haven't been successful. <laughs> but um, you haven't had anything printed. Well, I did have an opportunity, but like, it's um, it wasn't the book I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, and um, the the sad reality of the photo book publishing world, it seems to be that like a lot of people have to actually not only can make the material, they have to contribute a lot of funds to making it happen. Mm -hmm. And like, if I have to contribute funds, I've, I've raised money to do a book, um, through selling work specifically for, uh, the, the book about Ken, but, um, I'm not going to put my own money in something I don't really truly believe in. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, which is the version they wanted to put out. Well, they wanted to do some, something entirely different, which is about a project I did in two, like 2006, 2007. Oh, wow. And it, I was like, well, I'm not even doing that kind of work exactly anymore. And why, why now? And yeah, this was like just before the, um, uh, just as the, uh, Ukraine war was getting going and, like the contract was very complicated and it was like, Oh, if there's any like price changes, like we're just going to pass that along to you. And I was like, what? Uh, yeah. Like it was just too, I'm like, I don't believe in this project enough to spend this money that I raised for a book on this project. Yeah. So but, um, that, well, I, you, that's actually interesting. So like you kind, even though it's published by a publisher, there is an element of self-publishing. Like you have to raise the funds for it. That's wild. I mean, I'm not, certainly not every photo book is like that, but like, a, I think that there is this, especially in the photo industry, there's a lot of photo book publishing. I think there's a lot of pay to play. Yeah. Wow. Situations going on. Wow. I didn't know that. That's interesting. That makes me feel better about my relative 
lack of success <laughs> <laughs> in my in my library of uh of books about my work that's wild man i mean i i the the it's no nowhere near as wild as the uh <laughs> as the thing that i'm still trying to process i i feel so sorry for ken ken i i feel for you man uh and if uh is there like does he have like a GoFundMe or something like that? That sounds, it seems lame, but to to like propose as an outsider. But if he needs help, like I'm t I'm obviously in influencer mode. <laughs> 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 like, what can I do? Hey, can the five people that don't have money to give this show something give it to Ken? <laughs> <laughs> um, what 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 do you what do you think? Uh, like, what are you doing to try to keep his spirits up? Like, do you, what is that? Well, I went to go see him um, not that long ago, back in, uh, just after Thanksgiving, I went to go see him. Mm. And I hadn't seen him since before he went to prison. How does he feel about, you didn't say it during the, the taping, but, but, but we were talking a little bit before, and you said that you you feel kind of responsible. Uh, it's uh, I mean, indirectly, your intentions were good, right? But right. how do you feel about that, and how does he feel about that? Because well, it seems if, like he's cool with you still. Well, if I he hadn't have met me, he wouldn't have gone to prison. Yeah, that's a clear. Yeah, but he was right to be skeptical of you. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of his buddies thought when they first met me that I was an agent, like a federal agent. <laughs> yeah. I, and you, he's like, you could you? Could. And he's like, if this guy's an agent, he's got a really long long game he's playing with yeah, me like yeah. this whole art thing he's gonna like <laughs> buy like little bits of this for me for and then sell it to museums and like they make these great photographs like no no federal agent doesn't have that kind of yeah, yeah. like strategy or ta <laughs> i guess or talent or knowledge to do all that to get you <laughs> i love the idea of an artist photographer agent that's like really talented as at his art but also just wants people in jail <laughs> right so successful they can have a side hustle of... <laughs> it's kind of like the what's it called good good night good luck guy what's uh the it was was it chuck woolery or who's the guy that said he was that he was like the tv guy and then he was the uh, walter cronkite no 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 it was it was uh he's the guy that invented the gong game or something like that and then he, he there was a movie called good night good luck about him but he basically made up that he was a secret agent and he just wrote a whole book and it was like it was a fantasy thing but like people kind of believed it for a little while oh he's an early george santos yes definitely an early george santos although <laughs> I love his thing. Like, I always joke with my people, I'm Jewish. I'm not Jewish. <laughs> yeah, That's some balls. That guy's going to go, I'm sorry, but that guy's going to go far just because when you see him, he just doesn't blink. Like, he's so good at just eating shit. <laughs> like, from the uh, taking reporters' questions and they're just making fun of him and he's just pretending like it's not happening. Oh, God. That is a skill that goes far in this. Well, in he's this been country. doing it his whole life. You I know? know. Yeah, yeah. That guy like, is full of shit and good at it. Good at it. <laughs> but a piece of shit. <laughs> he's probably going to get reelected. Oh, a hundred percent. No, and and people are going to give him more money because he's so good. Like you, he ate so much shit, and he's doesn't inside. matter. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how you get there. <laughs> is he a Democrat or Republican? I forget. He's a Republican. Okay, yeah. He's openly gay too. <laughs> Like one of the only one of those. No, I'm sus about he, that. Although he was he was married to a woman who, um, I guess they thought maybe she got married to him for green card reasons. Cool. Yeah. I anyway, mean, let's not talk about him because no, I it, this isn't a podcast about. He doesn't need any more attention. No, I just love the 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 catchphrase should be definitely be immortalized. Anyway, so um, so if Ken hadn't met me. It would have been... He wouldn't have gone to prison, but he also would probably be dead by now. Why? <laughs> Why? Because you stopped him playing with toys? <laughs> well, what I'm leaving out of this conversation so far is he um, had a big... Don't leave stuff out, man. <laughs> well, he had a big meth problem. <laughs> okay. So this, all this craziness is like meth-fueled, and he was going, like, he was... Health was declining, mm -hmm. and, you know, like... Being in prison and not having any money because you can get meth in prison. Yeah. But it's mad expensive. Really? Yeah. He says a package of a carton of cigarettes was like 
fourteen thousand dollars or something. What? Yeah, it's like two hundred dollars a cigarette or something. Wow. Okay, exactly. Anyway, it's that's not the math isn't quite right there, but it's something ridiculous. And meth is meth is there too, but he stopped doing meth and hasn't done meth since. Yeah. And in a in a way, he one part of his life is over, but now he needs to find something else. Yeah. Because he he recognizes that he was in a not going to sustain where he was. Yeah, it sounds like he was going to kind of he was killing himself and he would he would definitely be dead by now. Yeah. Well, I mean, cuz it was it wasn't meth, it might have been trank or who knows what, but he was like on a on a bad path and that stopped. Is he going to figure out the next thing? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem like he's going to get a job and it's tough, man. But um, he still has a fa- he's a family. He's got two kids and he has a wife. And... How old do you get? Do you, does he get? Is he? How do you get into social security? I'm I, so I, far from that age that I don't know. But I, well, I'm you hoping. have to pay into it. You have to pay into it like your whole life. And you have to get a certain. I forget what it is, but you have to pay a certain amount. And if you once you cross that threshold, you can get retirement money. I may be fucked. <laughs> Uh, too much uh, under the table stuff. No, um, that's terrifying. Uh, yeah. Um, is there like a hopeful note we can end on? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was kind of it, I think. Like he got a, he, he got a new lease on life. He got a new lease on life. He just doesn't know what it is yet. Cool. cool and that cool. we'll explore in the next book. Okay, cool. You know, well, I mean, you're still friends. You're still hanging out. I'm you. I'm imagining you're going to see him again eventually well i'd I'd like you know to see him when he's in a better place like, yeah i don't know how he's going to get there yeah uh, i mean i'd like to publish a book and i'd hope that it would bring some interest in, into him yeah. into him and maybe someone could do something with it beyond that yeah i feel like he- the route for him is TV. <laughs> like, you know, unfortunately, the, 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 the Discovery Channel thing didn't work out. But he, he, he reminds me a little of that guy. Do you, uh, and not like just by the lifestyle, not by the uh, scientific beliefs. You know, obviously this gentleman knows his stuff. But do you remember the guy that died trying to prove the earth was flat with like a rocket? A, j- yes. a rocket chair. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess he died, so it's not funny. But like, it, 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 he, he's, he's in that vein. I think that he would be an interesting guy. I, I, I. It's so sad that the only solution that I can come up for him is to be on television, <laughs> like the longest shot for like employment. Um, but yeah, that's that's crazy. All right. Well, uh, anything that we can like promote for you or anything that, uh, the, uh, the book is not out yet, but like you, we have your website. What's your website? Uh, it's Kevin Cooley.net. Dot net. And then, uh, you're Kevin Cooley on Instagram, right? Yeah. Kevin Cooley and an underscore at the very end. Okay. And, uh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Anything that I didn't get to that you, I didn't ask you that you maybe want to say in a random blurt out at the end or no? Or you, we've got it all covered. I think we got it covered. All right, thank cool, you so cool. much for coming by. Oh, it's been a pleasure. I mean, thank you for the story. That's like, I mean, it's heavy. <laughs> I'm gonna definitely be thinking about Ken, and I hope that he knows that like uh, we're rooting for him because that sounds like a real shitty deal, especially that Chat GPT thing. Um, yeah, we'll see how that plays out. But yeah, does it does it just seems like we're in the middle of the story. <laughs> a it seems bit. like that the book has to wait to, for that now. Too. Yeah, yeah, to see what comes out of that. But that is crazy, man. The, well, who do you I mean? Who do you talk to to get something on Chat GPT changed? You can't even do that with like, Wikipedia. Wikipedia, yeah. Wikipedia is run is like is uh, <clears throat> there are some people on Wikipedia who have things that are not true about them that are intentionally put there, like you know, like that they uh, you, you so so. They're, it's a psyop. Anyway, uh, <laughs> chat GPT is probably no better. Yeah, but there's at least there's like, so, I mean, there's like sources on the Wikipedia. And yeah, you, that is true. You could appeal to somebody. The, yeah, I mean, I don't know about like, the appeal process, but because a like, lot of the. It might not be successful, but like, you know, you could, 
I, did I ever tell you the story of the time that I, or I, I definitely haven't, but did I ever tell you the story of the time that I've got fired from, uh, from Postmates because I just wasn't made, like I got stuck in traffic and I wasn't making the delivery on time. And so they just told me like, all right, your contract is up and that's it. Like, I think that that is where like all of this stuff is going. It's all going to this very, like, there's nobody, you you can't complain to people on Instagram. You can't complain to people on YouTube. There's like YouTube, some people have channels that have enough people that they have a liaison and the liaison doesn't even know what's going on half the time. They have to talk to like, you know, the, the YouTube proper, like, and that's like channels that have millions and millions of followers. So I think that unfortunately that shit is going to happen to everybody and it's going to happen a lot more and there's going to be very little you can do about it. Um, but but thank you for bringing it to our attention so we can have nightmares. <laughs> no, I, I mean, it really is fascinating. And, uh, and I mean, I think the conversation on AI is only going to get creepier and creepier, especially on this podcast, because artists are not typically like for it. <laughs> yeah. They're not like, yeah, steal my art. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you so much for stopping by, or for, uh, I guess I stopped by, but thank you so much for being on this show. And Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you. And um, uh, thank you guys for checking us out. Uh, we'll be back next week with another artist with another topic that may or may not be art related. Today's was art related in that it was about process. <laughs> All right. Thanks. All right. Take care.